Okay, so this is going to be a brief tutorial on how to use a web-based mapping program to plot the location of a cache and then print a topographical map that you can use to navigate to that cache with Map and Compass. Um, this assumes that you've already written down the coordinates that were given for that cache in latitude and longitude. So we're going to start here with our browser by going to the website. This is caltopo.com. Now when you first get to caltopo.com, the screen you see may look a little different than mine. It really depends on whether or not you visited the site before. Um, it'll choose some reasonable defaults for the, for the view, but we want to go ahead and set some things up before we start using the tool. So the first thing I want to do is go to the upper right hand corner and change the type of map that's displayed. So under Google Layers, I'm going to select Google Map. And that's going to change to a road map. The next thing I want to do is I want to configure the, the units of measure that Keltopo uses so that it will except latitude and longitude as its primary unit. So up here along the top, there's a set of different drop-down menus. You want to go to Config, and you want to make sure the datum is set to WGS84, that your primary coordinate system is degrees, and that your second secondary coordinate system is UTM. I'm not going to explain what those are for. That's beyond the scope of this uh, tutorial. Okay. So now what I want to do is create a point on the map uh, and use that point to designate the coordinates of my cache location. I'm going to start by right clicking anywhere on the map with my mouse. Um, it doesn't really matter because after we create that point, we are going to move it by overriding the coordinates. So I'm going to just right click over by Lansing, say new marker. I'm going to give that marker a label. I'm going to call it cache. I'm going to give it a style that's different from the default. I'm going to select the bullseye style. I like that style. It's a little more representative of the type of markers I see on an orienteering map. So now what I want to do is under coordinates, I want to enter in the latitude and longitude coordinates that were given for the geocache location or whatever it is I'm interested in navigating to. Now I'm not giving coordinates in this demo of any particular cache location. This is just an example location that I dug up. So I've gone ahead and I've, I've pasted those into the coordinate box. Um, I'm now going to click the OK button. When I do, you're going to see that the red dot, which is the marker, is going to change. It's also going to move to a different location. Okay, so you can see now that the marker location has changed to a red bullseye. It's also located somewhere north of Detroit. If you can't see the marker on your map, maybe your map isn't centered in a way that the marker is visible, you can always click on the left-hand side on your marker's name, which is cache. That will recenter the map over your marker and it'll also pop up a window giving you some basic information. You can close that window so now what I'll probably do is I can use the up, the plus minus buttons on the left side of the map to zoom in. So I have a better idea now of where that location is located on the map. So I can now see different streets. Uh, and I know that, okay, if this particular location is somewhere within Stony Creek Metro Park. It's actually on the north end of the park. But now I want to generate a map that's going to be useful for hiking and using with map and compass to understand what sort of features are there, what is it that I'm looking for on the ground to get to this location. So I'm going to go back over to the map selection tool on the right hand side and I'm going to change my map to USGS. So now I have the familiar USGS topographical map layer and it's much more obvious if I zoom in I have a depression feature that is located on top of a hill. We can see here those obvious lines. So that gives me much better information about what's located at that particular feature location. Okay. 
What it doesn't show me very well is if there are any trails in the area. Um, that's one of the problems with a lot of the USGS map layers as they're, they're old, they're out of date. They don't give you a lot of information about trails. What you can try to look at is uh, switch your layer to Map Builder Topo. When you do that, you'll see that the map changes, and in this particular park, there is a lot of detailed trail information that will be drawn. Now, those trails are coming from a crowdsourced database of trails, which means that other people on the internet have uploaded the trail information in the database. There's no certification about the accuracy of those trails, but they're usually pretty good. Um, not perfect always. You still want to be vigilant when you're out hiking the trails. If you come across a trail that's not shown on the map or if the, the map is not correct. Um, but uh, this is a big advantage of this map type. Uh, the big disadvantage of the map builder topo map layer is that you've lost a lot of the uh, topographical land information. So even if I zoom in to that red bullseye, there's hardly any, any information to indicate that that was a depression on top of a hill um, because the amount of detail for the contours is much less. So you're sort of stuck here uh, choosing what type of map would be most useful to you to print and take with you. Um, or you can print them both and that way you have the best of both worlds on two different maps. So I'm going to start by switching back to USGS Topo and I'm going to get ready to print this map. So to print it, along the top, I go to the print menu and I select print to PDF or JPEG. I'm going to get a new tab on my browser. It's going to show a red rectangle. That represents the printed page that's going to come out of my printer when I print this map. So I want to make a couple adjustments to this based on things that I'm used to. I like to set a fixed scale of 1 to 24,000. That's a scale I'm used to. It's the same scale that USGS maps come printed at. It also matches my UTM plotter. I do like to turn on UTM grid lines with a one kilometer spacing. Again, that helps me intuitively look at a map and judge distances. Um, and in this particular case, I'm going to change the map to landscape, which I did down here. And then I may need to redrag the red rectangle so that's centered back over um, the area where the control or the red bullseye is shown, just to give me a map that's focused on the area that I'm going to be hiking in. I will sanity check that location, make sure that the map covers all the major crossroads that are in that area if possible, or the trailhead or parking lot that I think I will be stopping at. Um, once I've done that, I am ready to print this map. I can go to the left, click the Generate PDF button. A third window will open, and this will have the PDF version of my map. Now I can save this map to my local hard disk. Um, in this particular browser, there's a download button up in the upper right hand corner, or I can go ahead and print directly to my printer. And I have a printed map. Now if I want to go back and print the other map type that has trails information, I can close these previous tabs. I'm back to my original CalTopo map. In the upper right hand corner, I can switch back to Map Builder so that I see the trails. I'm going to zoom out. Again, I'm going to print to PDF. I'm going to select 1 to 24,000 with UTM grids. Again, I'm going to change the map to landscape instead of portrait mode. I'm going to center the map over my area of interest again. And again, I will click the Generate PDF button. This one may take a little longer. Uh, for some reason, I found that the map builder layer takes much longer to generate than the USGS layer and may have something to do with the different types of data that the program is pulling in off of other servers on the internet to generate this map. Once that's done, I can print that map as well and take both of those with me into the field 
um, and use those to navigate to whatever it is I'm looking for. Um, there's a lot more information other than that in Keltopo. Uh, in my advanced land navigation class, we cover the use of Keltopo for trip planning, route planning, route analysis, um, as well as how to use Keltopo to generate map sets that you can download to some Garmin GPS receivers and also download route and waypoint information from Keltopo to a GPS. So if that's information that would interest you, um, come talk to me about the Advanced Land Nav class, which will be taking place this fall. Thanks.